testing. One, two, three, four. Testing. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. People joining us, we're gonna get started here about one minute. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this afternoon press briefing. We have joining us Secretary of State Trey Hargett and Coordinator of Elections Mark Goins. For our friends in TV, if you guys would like to pin the speakers, that way you guys will have them full um, screen, that will be great. The way this will work is that we are going to have remarks from both Secretary Hargett and Coordinator Goins, and then we will take some questions before we wrap this up. Secretary Hargett, welcome. Thank you, Julia. And first, I just want to give a, a big tip of the hat to Mark Goins and his team of the Division of Elections and 95 county election administrators across the state, as well as the over 17,000 poll officials who are safe, clean, and secure environment. And um, it all started with us developing a great plan back in late March and April, and um, and it's been paying off in early voting both in August and now and now election day. So um, we have a few things we, we've seen around the state, no, nothing bigger, mostly one-offs. Uh, we had a report earlier on social media that we saw where somebody indicated that in Chattanooga at one of the voting sites, I think 1419 Memorial Boulevard, that poll officials weren't wearing masks. Um, Sure, what the voter saw or intended, but they weren't doing that. Uh, we, we have had a situation in Marion County that appears to have affected a couple of voters there who might have been given a city ballot uh, for the city of Kimball election, and they should not have been given a city of Kimball election. Once again, it appears it affected two people. We just got a little news a moment ago. There was a voter in Dixon who, in this case, I think they reported they called your TV station. And ask a question about why they cast for visual ballot. An absentee ballot. I've come to find out it was a clerical error. Good news is the person didn't leave without casting for visual ballot. That visual ballot will, in fact, be counted in the election returns. So um, here we are, just about 20 plus hours away from the polls closing across the state. Just want to urge everybody to be patient tonight. I think that most counties will have their election results. Um, unofficial results done by midnight. I think that probably the struggle comes in some of our large county. Davidson, Shelby, um, I know they'll be doing everything. I want to reiterate, we have stressed that if the choice is between accuracy and speed, uh, we're picking accuracy. We want every legal vote to be counted. Uh, don't want anybody to think there's an arbitrary deadline that we have to have everything done by tonight. Um, but everybody's going to do their work. And, and I believe, you know, sometime maybe 2.33 a.m. at the latest, we should be good. So it's going to be a long night for 
Mark and I and our Division of Elections team. But um, that, that's kind of what my expectations are this evening. I will say that you should anticipate early voting numbers, um, assuming that all the, the precincts in a county are closed, that once that happens, it's okay to release early voting numbers. And so around 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern should be in most counties when they start to release early voting to us. But they can't do that. They still have people in line. So I understand that. Uh, throughout the day, counties have been counting absentee ballots and making progress on that. Keep in mind, there are people who still, we are getting absentee ballots in today's mail. If, assuming they arrive to close the polls today, those absentee ballots will have to be counted. And then also keep in mind the fact that the results you see tonight are unofficial, that there's a certification process that every county goes through, and all 95 counties will certify their election results by November 23rd, and then those will be reported to us by that date later then for the Attorney General, myself, and the governor to then certify those at the state level. So with that, Mark, you've done a fantastic job. I want you to, to share some of the things that you've seen today. And they'd probably be interested in knowing kind of what most common questions we get on our one eight seven seven number are. Yeah. So what we're seeing today is obviously we did have a record early voting turnout. Most of y'all are going to be a record that we set. Almost two point three million voted. To put that in perspective, uh, two point six million is a record number of voters that we've had in Tennessee. So we should easily uh, break the record of. of folks that will have voted in a Tennessee election before. Uh, however, looking at, at the reports we're getting across the state, it doesn't sound like we're having uh, long lines at, at locations. This morning, we, we did have some lines that, and I characterize a long line, 30 minutes or more. Uh, sounds like this morning at some of the polling locations, uh, you know, folks had got there early and, and it did create uh, some lines that were uh, more than 30 minutes. Uh, we have some isolated counties where we've heard there's some lines, Chattanooga, uh, there's a couple counties in Upper East Tennessee, uh, but what right now what we're hearing is that it's, uh, you, you know, it's not, it's not like what we saw during early voting and probably because we had so many people vote during early voting. Uh, it's been a, a lot of, well, I shouldn't say it's been a very smooth election. It was not smooth going into it. A lot of planning by election officials and, and, and you know, a lot of dedication from the poll workers who work at the polling locations. So going into this election, it wasn't wasn't smooth at all because, you know, we are conducting a, an election in, in a pandemic. However, uh, when you compare today versus presidential elections in past, and so this is my 12th year doing this, so I've, I've been in, you know, working several presidential elections. Uh, this is probably the fewest calls that I can recall receiving. Uh, so it's very, uh, very smooth. Uh, the calls that we have received, generic questions, uh, you know, what time does my poll close? Uh, we've, we've had some, some questions about um, whether you can still register today or if, if you live. We've had, we had some interesting questions today. Some folks that lived in a different state, they're wanting to know if they could vote in another state. Really no major issues to, to report. Uh, very pleased at this point. Obviously, we still have a few hours to go in, in the election and any, anything can happen. But thus far, this has been uh, extremely smooth an election for today. I'll, I guess we're happy to take questions if you have them. Yeah, we have a couple questions. The first is Stacy Case from Fox Nashville. And reporters, if you'd like to ask questions, please put it in the chat in your organization. Stacey, you're, please open your mic. So, we, Stacey, you're still on mute. Stay, Julia, you probably have to unmute her. Yeah. Yeah. Still can't hear me? I can't now. You can now. Okay. Uh, quick question. The Zoom call kind of had a little bit of a glitch. Maybe it was just on my end, but did you say you would begin releasing the early voting numbers around 730 or 8 as soon as the polls close? And then secondly, we had uh, some people in Franklin County reach out to us saying that nobody there had any hand sanitizer available and everybody was reusing pins and you just go and get it out of a 
a little container and somebody just puts it right back in and nobody's doing any sort of sanitizing and they're a little bit concerned about that. Well, as they should be, and, and I had not heard that, Mark, we, we need to get off this call as soon as we can and, and let's make sure that Franklin County follows the protocols that the rest of the state is following. Stacey, did they give you a, a specific precinct? Uh, let me look at the email real quick. Um, lady says, just voted in Franklin County. No one wiping down machines after the votes. I know it's a bush, push button type, but if also not seeing any pins being single used. Um, she did not say the precinct. She just says Franklin County. Okay. Thank Sorry. You. Well, that's certainly not how we train. You know, we, we worked with okay. election administrators all across the state developed a plan and actually secretary Hargit was the one said we've got to we've got to get a plan we got to get it early so for those of you in the nashville area literally right after the tornado we started getting administrators together and planning and so we had buy-in from all across the state and we developed a comprehensive plan that is not what's in the plan we sent a mass shield plug sanitizer we had uh, um, actually Jack Daniels donated uh, sanitizer for this November election. Uh, we ended up um, having plenty of sanitizer. So that I don't really understand why that's going on in Franklin, uh, because that is not the plan that we put in place. And that is not. Clarify, it was Franklin County rather than yeah. the city of yes, Franklin. Ma'am. And then did yes. you say you will begin releasing early voting numbers around 730 or 8? 730, 730 Central, 830 Eastern. So keep in okay. mind. Let's close at 8 Eastern, 7. We cannot release them, though. And I say we. Counties can't release those as long as they believe they have anybody in line waiting to vote. So if they're not released at 730, in all likelihood, it's because there's somebody in line somewhere. So don't read anything negative into that. Got it. Okay. So, the and so, it says at seven, so the law says at 7 p.m. Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, we have a poll official go to the end of the line. So when the polls close, if you are standing in line when the polls close, we vote those individuals. The law says that if as long as there is a polling location open in the county, we're not that county is not supposed to release the early voting totals. Okay. To release that number at the appropriate time. No, they'll be ready to push the button essentially to tabulate after them when the poll closes. So they have not been counted? No. Okay. Yeah, and some may have them, you know, shortly before, you know, some of the smaller counties may report them 715, somewhere there along. Voted during the early voting period, it actually takes longer to run these tally tapes from the machine. So 730 is probably more realistic. Whereas typically other elections, we're looking 715, 720, but you know, this is record early voting turnout. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Chris Luther with WMC. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Perfect. How are you guys doing today? Fine, thank great. you. Thanks for joining. Great, great. Thanks for talking with us. Um, so we've heard from the mayor of Shelby County that Shelby County has more votes than any other county in uh, the state of Tennessee, and that one in seven votes being uh, cast so far have come from Shelby County. Can you quickly talk about the uh, the turnout so far uh, that you've seen in Shelby County and your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, we're very pleased with the representing turnout statewide, and, and so I think Shelby County has done a great job of creating safe, clean, and secure environments where people can cast their vote confidently. And so I think the turnout speaks to the great job that Linda Phillips and her team have done during early. And one quick follow-up, um, is this the uh, latest election that y'all can remember working um, in terms of getting results back? I know earlier you're speaking about uh, you know, two thirty, three o'clock to get uh, you know unofficial results for tonight. Um, is this kind of the latest, biggest delay you've seen in an election in the time that you've worked with them? Well, we always. I mean, frankly, there's always some outlier. It's not, it won't be the first time that Mark and I have gone home after three a.m. Um, but there's usually something that happens on election night that keeps us here late. You know, some of you can remember the congressional race that was decided by less about forty votes a few years ago. Um, that kept us up late. We've had. You know, times where counties thought that they were done, we had to call a county and go get the you know get the administrator out of bed for them to come back and finish their job. So.
So things happen, um, but this is the largest number of absentee by mail ballots we've ever gotten. And that really is what places the greatest strain on Shelby and Davidson, especially. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Is this for me? Yes, Sydney. Perfect. Hi. So great to talk to you guys. Um, so I would like to kind of go back, and this kind of feeds off of Chris's last question, talking about when official results will be in. Everyone's going to be eager to know, you know, what we've got going on. Um, can you just maybe reiterate and maybe describe any further when we will actually have official results? Great question, Cindy. So those results aren't official until each county certifies their results. And every county will have a different date that they get together to do that, a different time where the election commission will come together. But they have to be done by November 23rd. Now, the truth of the matter is, unofficial results rarely change very much at all and affect the overall outcome different than the official results. Um, we have to remind everybody every election cycle that what we put on our website is unofficial and that there's still things to be done, such as looking at provisional results over the coming days. So um, Tennesseans hopefully understand that. We continue to harp on that, and you helping us make that point will, continue, will help us even more. That is what I'm hoping to do. Um, and then just a last kind of follow-up. You'd mentioned Chattanooga being one of those places with long lines. I've seen it. That's exactly where I am. And um, anything you would like to say to any of the Chattanoogans that are a little maybe frustrated with that? You know, I, I, for some reason, I know of one side in particular. I just got a text a moment ago telling me they're still an hour late. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's election day and, and some some sites are going to be busier than others. Please don't leave your spot in line. Um, I would like to tell you it's going to get shorter. Usually this is a non-peak time. And, and I, the one I'm talking about is Athens and Pike is the one I'm hearing about. It's, it's an hour away. And earlier today was three hour ways. Um, you know, Mark has talked to the election commission over there, and they're doing the best that they can process those voters and just want to assure voters that they're in line by 8 p.m. Eastern. They're going to have the opportunity to vote and, and just, you know, be patient if they can. Mark, you Thank you so much. Thank you, Sydney. Mark, you need anything to that? No, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we do. Lines. It is something that after the election, we'll look at and see, you know, is this because of a robust turnout? Because if you have a lot of people show up, you're going to have lines and that's not a bad thing. Or is it a situation that there may have been some kind of issue at that polling location? Right now, we're not aware of any issues at the polling location. It, it does appear to be interest driven, but that is something that we will, uh, take a look at, but you know, folks are standing in line. It's a very important election. I would say it's more important than riding a ride at, at Disney World. And, and you know, when you ride a ride at Disney World, sometimes you have to stand in line because there's a lot of people interested in it. And so if that's the reason folks are standing in line, I can live with that. If it's something that we can do better, then you know, I want to make sure that we take, take that going forward. But right now it looks like it's interest driven based on the communications I've had with the administrator there locally. And by the way, Sid, I'm very, very impressed with the work of the County Election Commission during this election. I'm sure they'll love hearing that. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Rebecca, with Local 24. I've asked you to unmute. You're asking me to unmute again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Rebecca. Okay, still good. Okay, thanks. Um, on the lawsuit underway by the Tennessee Democratic Party against your office, um, the party said to deny their ability to reach out to voters and let them know their options for casting a ballot is a form of voter suppression. Um, what's your reaction? And then I also have a follow-up. Well, first, this is not underway. We won that lawsuit. Um, I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to address that. You know, I, I think, frankly, it's a, it's a great effort by the Tennessee Democrat Party to misinform voters and create voter disenfranchisement. They did not make a public request of our, a public request of our office. Um, and, and frankly, they asked for information that we don't typically compile that report. In fact, we've got somebody who even precedes me in this office who's never compiled that report. The proper place to go was the county. They should have done that. Uh, from my understanding, is they have gone to counties and gone about the right way yesterday and, and I assume have gotten that information they wanted by now. 
But I'm going to reiterate, they didn't make a public records request, so therefore there was nothing to deny. They also said in their press release, they reached out to 95 counties. In court yesterday, they admitted to reach out to five. And furthermore, they've alleged that we told counties not to provide that information, and that's not true. And so what is it? it's an attempt to try and delegitimize the election results, and that's very unfortunate, and that ultimately disenfranchises voters and erodes public confidence. Yeah, and, see, and, and, and can may I add to that? Uh, you know, they threatened us with a lawsuit on Sunday. Didn't make a request, said we denied a request. You can't deny a request you don't receive. And then Sunday morning, they sent us a, 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 a threatening law, lawsuit letter at nine o'clock when in 9 a.m. when most people are at church or getting ready to go to church and said, if you don't respond within two hours, uh, we're going to sue you. And, and part of that communication, they said that they had called the office. Well, we weren't working Sunday in the office, but here's what's unique about that. The attorney, I, I try to be as transparent as possible. I give my cell phone to the attorney who, who typically litigates these issues and in fact litigated this issue. He has my cell phone and has used it as recently as Thursday. He did not call me Saturday, Sunday on my cell phone when he has that number. I give, in, in order to be transparent, and if there's issues out there, I give my cell phone to the different chair individuals of the party. So the chair lady, did they call us on my cell phone and ask for this information? What they did was say, we asked you for it, and now we're suing you for because you didn't give it to us. I came back into the office on Sunday to look to see if we had a public request, whether that was you know, through email or whatever the case may be. So really, I, if you look at the court hearing, everything that they discussed was false. It was, it was a press release based on falsehoods, and they really shouldn't be able to get by with this. Honestly, it, 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 and they admitted in court you know, they said they contact, look at the press release. We contacted 95 counties. Well, in court, we really didn't contact 95 counties. We contacted five different counties or six different counties. But throughout the entire process, uh, you know, when they, it's easy to go out there and issue a press release and, and throw bombs at someone. The only thing that they did was distract us on Sunday when we should have been preparing for Tuesday. And they distracted us based on lies. That's what they did. They, they distracted us based on lies, and it's really not right. Got it. Thank you so much for that response. And then also, too, um, any, or what, what is basically the biggest challenge that you guys think you might be facing today or a challenge that you're already facing? COVID-19. <laughs> Without a doubt, COVID-19. And, and so, you know, I, I entered this with a few different concerns. First, we, we entered this with the health and safety of voters and poll officials utmost to my mind. And that's why I went to all 95 counties personally and entered in a, a voting precinct in all 95 counties during early voting. And to demonstrate that I felt secure going um, and it was safe and healthy. And I voted, I personally and my wife, we both voted in person. Um, you know, also, we were praying for the weather. I mean, it's easier to social distance when the weather's good outside. God has blessed us with beautiful weather throughout early voting throughout and now on both election days. And another issue we first saw was poll workers. We set up a via page to become a poll worker campaign. And Mark had a modest goal of trying to find 3,500 people who would come into the portal and agree to come and work the polls. We got almost 20,000 people that came to the portal and said they were going to work the polls. And, and we got so many people in different counties that counties didn't even have time to call them all at the end of the day. The real heroes of this process are the people who came and worked the polls during early voting election day who served on these county boards. They're the ones who really made this election happen. Okay, thank you so much. Mariah? Mariah Timms with the Tennessean. Your line should be open. Hi, Secretary Coordinator. Thanks for taking calls this afternoon. Um, sort of a two-pronged question about voter behavior here. Uh, first of all, you know, we, we saw in raw numbers record turnout and early voting and absentee ballots. We've also seen, you know, going back to 1996, that early and absentee voting has become an, a large share of the total vote. 
Um, given everything that we've seen this year in those raw numbers, do you anticipate it being a, a significant share and increasing share of the total vote we see, you know, looking at the short line, well, relatively short across the state lines today? And uh, the second part of that, um, as came out in court yesterday, like you said just a minute ago, uh, the state doesn't track who hasn't returned an absentee ballot on the same level they track who already has. How does that, you know, that lack of information, does that play into your predictions here? So I'm going to try and answer what I think was your question, and Mark, you, you may want to chime in. Um, you, you're right. First, I'll um, it, it's just not something we collect. You know, as of this morning, I understand there were still 25,000 plus ballots that still had to be returned. Of course, today's mail was still yet to be received, and the United States Postal Service designated post offices in all 95 counties for people to have the opportunity to bring their ballot to the post office to ensure the little by close of polls. Um, the, the next thing you had mentioned is about voter behavior. I do think that part of the reason you see some smaller lines in places is because people chose to go vote early. Um, that's something we didn't know headed into today. Did we, were we seeing the people who traditionally voted on election day decide to vote earlier? We noticed with each election, excluding the presidential preference primary, a larger share of people are now voting during early voting. You know, and frankly, I expect that to continue to increase over time. It's really like we no longer have an election day. It's more like an election period. Mark, which you- In ballots, one of the things that we did see that we, we haven't seen before, of course, the law is fairly recent law. It, it passed a couple of years ago. It used to be if you requested an absentee ballot, if you showed up the polling location, you were told you couldn't vote. You, you weren't allowed to vote. If you request an absentee ballot, you were done. That ended it. Uh, the legislature, I think two, maybe three years ago, uh, with their support, changed the um, changed the law to say that if you have requested a ballot, and really it was set up if there's some type of issue, perhaps if the mail if there was a mailing issue or something along those lines, you showed up on election day or during early voting, provisional ballot that provisional ballot would count as long as your by mail ballot did not uh, get sent in. What we saw uh, this year, which like I say. It's a new law, but we haven't really seen this election before. We didn't see people necessarily seeing, using it as a, a safe harbor, if you will. We saw people changing their mind. In other words, they would, they request. They voting and decided to, to cast a ballot that way. Uh, we believe that those voters are not intending to send that ballot back. And this happened in. And he's based on what we've heard, but I mean, I've heard, you know, four digit numbers in, in Shelby uh, that, that voted provisional. We believe those provisionals are, are going to be folks that change their mind. Davidson County uh, is, is, is very similar. So just because there's some ballots out there that's outstanding, that doesn't mean they didn't send their ballot, you know, that we didn't receive their ballots back after they sent it. In many instances, it's where they changed their mind. Honestly, that's not how the law was changed you know, set up, it, it allows for that. It, the, the, the law really means if, you know, if you've got some issue, you should be able to vote this way. But this time we saw folks that uh, like changing their mind. And that, uh, that did create some issues for us um, the first couple of days of early voting, because when these folks are voting a provisional, it does take a little bit longer. But once we saw this trend, and we saw how many people were, were, were changing their mind, and we were able to adapt to that. Just to clarify, because of that reason, like we've never seen before, uh, we, don't, we don't typically have a, a lot of provisionals, comparatively speaking, when you look at the different voters, uh, you know, the, the number of voters. But, yeah, we, we, we definitely have more provisionals. And like I say, it, it, it seems to be generated by these folks that have changed their mind. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian, your mic should be open. Adrian with the Associated Press. Uh, hello, thanks for having this uh, availability. Um, there have been reports in other states of yeah. robocalls um, telling people or advising people to stay safe and stay home. Um, I was wondering if uh, Tennessee has gotten any reports. 
more I, you, me of that taking place here in the state. Yes, we had one. We got one report. I did uh, report that to uh, both state and federal Department of Homeland Security uh, individuals. Um, I heard the message. You know, essentially, it was a female voice who said, uh, "Stay safe and stay home." It, I've not heard that it took place today on election day. This was actually someone reported this during the early voting period. I've not heard heard of anything since then. I was informed, as you said, Adrian, that that it's happened in in other states. And in fact, I think it may have happened in in Canada and some some other places like that. I don't know if someone's testing the system. I, I can only speculate, but I don't know that it's related to the voting. Uh, but I, I did report that and and haven't received any other uh, uh, call other than one one individual. Thank you. Travis, with the Associated Press, your line should be able to be unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I just want, the audio is a little bad, so I just want to confirm what I heard. Now, um, we know that 2.3 mil, you've said 2.3 million early or absentee ballot. Can you tell me how, can you break that down? How, how many absentee and how many early? The early voting number, I think, was about 2.28 memory, and the absentee voting was, I think, about 200 and just short of 210,000 is what my memory is. I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me. Okay. And and did you say there about 25,000 of those absentee ballots were not returned? Well, my understanding is there's still about 25,000 absentee ballots that have not been returned. But keep in mind, Mark said something a moment ago that we think some people, for lack of a better term, are deciding, um, well, I'll just say it this way, that there are people who decided they're not going to cast their absentee ballot. They went to the polls and instead cast a provisional ballot so they could vote in person for whatever reason. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought he was saying. And then, so that 210 absentee ballots, is that would that be ballots returned or is that how many ballots went out? That's returned. That's returned. Okay. And tell me how you deal with provisional ballots. Mark, if you want to walk through that process, I, I'd love to have them have a really good understanding of the coming days. Provisional ballot is if someone doesn't have a valid photo ID, meaning a Tennessee government ID or a federal ID, in that instance, that individual vote a provisional ballot, they'll have two days to bring voting. They'll still have the two days after the election to bring in ID. And if they bring in the valid ID, then that ballot will count. Uh, there's another form of provisional ballot. And this is a, this is a traditional way to vote provisional. And most uh, states will have uh, provisions that are non-election officials that are charged with assisting in the voter registration process. Department of Health, uh, you know, the main one is probably the Tennessee Department of Safety. Uh, there was an issue when the law passed back in the 1994 that set up these different agencies. There was instances where individuals would go to register, but the form wasn't getting to election officials because it's two different agencies with two different responsibilities. As the as the years went, went on, federal government came in, passed a law that's they want to register with the Department of Safety or these other different agencies. And the way we're going to do this, if this individual shows up at the polling location, uh, they're not on the voter restoration rolls, doesn't matter who they are, but if any individual shows up, we we have to vote those individuals a provisional ballot. And we have, we work with the different agencies. And we, we like, let me give an example from the Department of Safety. A voter comes in, they vote a provisional ballot because they're not on the on the rolls. We, we have a list or we work with uh, individuals. They're, they're, all these different agencies have folks assigned to this office. The local county election commission will submit that information. First, they'll look and see if there's an application that's in the local office. But if they don't find that, they'll, they'll, sum, they'll submit that information to us. And we have staff that will research with the Department of Safety. And if that individual checked that, that they wanted to register to vote, there's a record of that. And if they did that, then that vote will count. So if someone comes in and says they've registered to vote and we, we've, they, they do not count on election night. They uh, typically will count uh, three days after the election, but there is a way to get an extension if you have a, a tremendous amount of provisionals. And then you have this newer provisional that I was telling you about that uh, 
you know, the legislature passed a, a few years ago. And that is if someone votes by mail and they, you know, don't get their ballot or they feel like they're not going to be, you know, don't have enough time to send it back, then they can show up during early voting or on election day. And in that instance, if we have not received their ballot, then we will count that provisional. However, if we've received their ballot, then that works. Uh, this, this by, the provisionals are counted by a bipartisan uh, team. Uh, each county has a local election commission. You've got Democrats and, represent, and Republicans that serve on the election commission. They are entitled to appoint folks of their respective party to serve on this counting board. So it's not just the, you know, the, the boards that count these provisionals. They are a bipartisan uh, team. They'll be presented with the facts. And once they're presented with the facts, they'll vote to count that ballot. If someone votes a provisional ballot and it does not count, that individual is given notice. And Mark, something you said a moment ago, a lot of people miss out on. It's Democrats and Republicans counting these ballots, and they are residents of that county. These are people that you go to church with, you see at football games, you see at grocery stores. These are your neighbors that are working and counting these ballots. With the Times Free Press. Yeah, hey, uh, I came in uh, slightly late. Uh, let me make sure what you were saying at the beginning, Trey. Uh, ballots that uh, had yet to be returned. Was that correct? That's correct. That, that, and, that's, and how many? That's information. And how many total? I don't know what today's mail brought. And, and you know, and at three o'clock local time, people were able throughout all nine five counties to. Um, have a drop, bring their mail to, or bring their ballot to a designated post office each county. So, you know, I, I, no, I get that. And, and, and how many uh, before today or, or uh, I guess it's Saturday was the last day you all have figures for, uh, for how many absentees had come in, how many absentee ballots had, had come in at that point and how many have been sent out total? Mark, I guess total we, we sent out, I say we, the, 95 counties sent out, what, around 235, 240,000, is that correct? I'd have to look. We, we ran some numbers. Uh, I think that's right. And in my memory, without the spreadsheet in front of me, you know, we were just short of 210,000 after the ballot return. Um, during, during and that was of Saturday? Yes. No. Okay. All right. Well, no, no, that wouldn't – well – that would be on our website. Yeah, the person, no, the person that was working with the counties, that should have been through yesterday. So that was updated. Yeah, it should have been yesterday. But the what? The number from Saturday. So I, I don't have the, I don't have the new number post Saturday. So the number. I well, again, I'm a little confused here. So the, so the 210,000 return, uh, you know, that were, uh, uh, it was as of, uh, was it the Friday? Uh, I'm actually going. It was 210,000 that were counted through October 29th. Okay. All right. I'm with you. All right. Thank you much. Thank you, Andy. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time today. Thank you, Secretary Do you, and thank you for going. So, Do you have last remarks? Julia, I want to correct the number I gave earlier, and I, I think someone asked me this question. Um, early voting in person number, I think I said it was 2.28. That's the overall number. It's 2.07 in person, and then it was 210,000 that we had absentee votes in through the 29th. So that would have been where the 2.28 number came from. So I apologize if, if, um, if I misstated that, but not if, because I did misstate it. Mark? Questions throughout the evening, and um, we're gonna be doing our best to make sure we keep the lines of communication open for each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.